Hi guys, we're gonna get started here real quick. Uh, we're waiting for people to join in. We're super excited to have you here. This is our 10th webinar that we have done. So that means we've been in quarantine for 10 weeks. So super excited to have you here. We have our guests again. We have Jeff Kish and we also have Allison Burkhart who are gonna be joining us. And they're gonna be doing the back channel as well as hopefully Allison created a lesson plan. So hopefully we'll have time for her to showcase her lesson plan. We're gonna get started in two minutes. I hope you guys are excited. I am, we're gonna learn about student engagement and deployment plan for blended learning. So we'll be back here in just two minutes. All right, I love it. I can see that people are already introducing yourselves. Of course, that's what the chat room is all about. I'm here, I'm in, my name is Marcia Kish, for those of you who are here for the first time. We're super excited to have you today. We're gonna to be talking about student engagement and what that looks like. As you can see, I'm actually standing in my backyard. I'm gonna be using all kinds of backgrounds today to kind of entice you, get you excited, and think about how you can use backgrounds in your classroom. I posted a link in the chat room. That chat room link is going to take you to, oh, see, now I gotta turn off my background because that didn't work out so well. <laughs> the, the link that I was posted you in the background is going to, chat room is going to take you to this link here. This is a PDF that is all about student engagement, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today. So this is going to be what you can go grab off of that link. I also put together just this morning, fresh off the press, a growing together virtual classroom expectations. And it's kind of a fun way that you can actually have this as an anchor chart or send it home as a PDF. So take a look, I put that link also as part of the link that just went out to you. So today we're gonna to be doing it almost like in three sections. One, we're gonna be doing like a road trip, talking about how to engage students in a virtual environment. Two, we're gonna talk about the deployment plan. And three, we're gonna round up with answers, questions, and next steps. We are also super excited. We have a new update to our phone app. Uh, Jeff will put the link in the chat room for you. The phone app is there because it has everything we have done for the last 10 weeks, all the videos, all the resources, all the templates. And when you get started next year in the fall, you'll have this with you. It's almost like you get to carry me in your back pocket. I mean, come on, how exciting is that? 
<laughs> kind of weird, but at the same time, kind of cool because everything is one spot. Today, we are going to be doing the virtual learning student engagement in a road trip format. There is going to be a game that we are going to be doing. Uh, the game is you have to guess my end destination. My end destination, meaning that I'm going to be going to different states and you have to figure out the end state. And if you can get the city, that's even a bigger bonus. What do you get? Well, you get a free webinar with me, meaning I will go and do a workshop for your school on student engagement, differentiated instruction, or blended learning. So you definitely want to make sure you're playing the game. So grab your pen, grab your pencil, because we're getting ready to go. Remember, the goal is to figure out what state I will end up in along with what city. Jeff knows the answer, so he's going to be monitoring also if you have a guess. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. Let's get started. All right. As I'm getting ready, I know that we have Jeff and Allison on board. You guys want to just say hi and tell them what you've been up to last week? Go ahead, Allison. Can everyone hear me? Hi guys. Um, we are finishing up our school year, so I have been grading everything that's turned in because uh, when you're a little lenient with deadlines, kids like to wait till the last minute. So I love those uh, Google Classroom submissions at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> You got to love it, don't you, Allison? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're super excited to have you back with us again. So if you have any questions for Allison, she's been doing blended learning for the last couple of years. She's in the back channel answering any questions. And hopefully we get time. She's made a really cool lesson plan for a hybrid environment. So hopefully we'll have time to share that out. And let's see, Jeff, hey, are you there? Hey, gang. Thanks for hopping on today. It is number 10 for us. Hard to believe. Uh, I think we've done it every week now for 10 weeks, two months. So it's been fun. It's great. Uh, we have about 80 people on with us today. I hope you hang out. Uh, Marsha's put together a very fun and engaging and uh, a good gift here at the end. So pay attention to the clues and see if you can guess where uh, she's heading to. All right, let's do this. So here we go. We're gonna start out first of all by our cool introduction of how to increase student engagement. Why did I pick this topic? I picked this topic because of the fact that when I was watching all the questions that were coming through last week, sorry about that, I noticed that student engagement, how do I get the kids to be engaged, was their number one thing that I saw all week long. And I get it, I understand, it's tough. How do we keep those kids engaged? Well, that's my whole goal today, is to help you with that. So first off, I am starting my journey in the wonderful, great state of Ohio. That's right, that's my hometown. So we are gonna start our state out in the great state of Ohio. Let's do it for the Buckeyes along with Zoo Days and the all kinds of fun things. Kish Camp is the number one thing all of our nieces and nephews love. So we're going to talk about how to increase student engagement in a road trip format. So we're going to go through all these different destinations giving you 10 ideas you can use for your classroom as we travel through. So our first one that we are going to do is we are going to first talk about the clue, take out a look at the clue. If you're watching, you can see there's a clue there. We're gonna talk about how to get to know your students. This is really important. When we are designing a virtual environment, we really wanna make sure that we take time to talk to the kids. I mentioned in the flyer that you can grab for free that if you stop and talk to the kids about like maybe set up a get to know you meeting, a one, five to 10 minute meeting with all your kids, I know, Allison would agree, she has 120 kids, but it's worth it. Take that time, get to know them, ask them what they have, what ideas they have for virtual learning. If we're gonna still be in a virtual environment in the fall, take this time to get you to know your students, talk to them about what way do they learn best, do a modality style quiz. There are a lot out there that you can go take a look at. Make sure you keep track of their birthdays or any other special days. Like, you know, hey, is there gonna be something fun that you're looking forward to? Like maybe hopefully homecoming. <laughs> um, introduce the online resources. When you have that five to 10 minutes with the kids one-on-one, -on -one, show them your learning management system or Google Classroom. Walk them through, this is where I'm gonna be posting, this is where you should be looking for it. It doesn't have to be crazy. 
you could just point them in that direction and then you can have a recording that walks them through step by step. Maybe that's their very first assignment. But take that time while you're with them. Be like, hey, I wanna see your screen. Let's pull it up together. Show me where to go. All right, you're good. And yes, this is really important for the littles. We wanna make sure that those little guys and their parents are sitting right beside you, helping them get going with this. Also talk to the students about what awards, what sports, what do they like to do when they're not in school? Because all of that is going to create this academic relationship with your students. So we really wanna make sure that you take time to get to know your kids. It's, it sounds crazy, but at the same time, it's super fun. Does anybody know where this backdrop is? I know I have a lot of Ohio people out there. You should know, it's one of my absolute favorite places to go. So first one is think about how you can go in and change your environment by learning about your students. All right, we're going to destination number two. This is one of my ultimate favorite locations in the world because I get to go surfing and it's easy to get to. Most people go to Florida because the fact is they get to go to Disney World. Well, I go to Florida because I wanna go surfing. <laughs> I know, sounds crazy. I'm stuck in Ohio, but I'm a surfer. So here we go, whoops, sorry, I grabbed the wrong slide. Sorry, here we go. We made it to Florida. Yay! <laughs> I love it when we go to Florida. It's super fun. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a schedule. Number two thing to keep the student engaged is one, add your passion and projects into what you're presenting. My tip for you is number two is to think about how you can lay out a calendar for your students. What does it look like in September? What does it look like in October? Tell them they're gonna have virtual or on-site or maybe Fridays are gonna be your office days. That's really important so they can make sure they're planning for it. Another thing that you wanna do is set up the week. If you're gonna be doing a virtual environment, really think about the week layout. Here's what you're gonna do language arts, you're gonna do math, you're gonna have lunch break, you're gonna have time to work, you're gonna to go to social studies. Lay it out for the kids so they, don't, they know how to plan their week. And then finally, think about what your schedule would look like when you're teaching. Are you going to start out with a whole group? I hope so. Get them excited about your lesson for the day. Then move into small group. Then do digital content, future ready. If you listened to my session last week, you heard me talk about this. You heard me go through and say, hey, take what you normally do and just break it up into these chunks. Don't surprise the kids, walk them through it. Your first couple of times that you're with the kids, go say, hey, this is what we're gonna be doing and this is what we need you to do while you're in this environment. So there is also a clue, hopefully you put two together right now. Horses? Hmm, I wonder what horses mean. All right, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna just ask questions. If you have any questions for me specifically on any of those two steps, yeah, I see people marked Cedar Point. Nice. <laughs> what happens to the kids if they do not, not capable to schedule, uh, follow a schedule we have established? Cindy, that is a great question. As I'm working with all kinds of superintendents across the country, we are really trying to devise a plan that really says, hey, this is your schedule we want you to follow as much as possible. Of course, kids might not be able to because there might be four kids all trying to get on the Zoom at the same time but we're going to establish a schedule first and then we're gonna back off and see how we can adjust it and modify it for that individual student. Just because one or two kids are having trouble with this does not mean that we're gonna throw it all out. So you definitely wanna just take that time to create something for those students. Kentucky horses, I'm not ending up in Kentucky, even though I like it, I got engaged in Kentucky. All right, here we go. Here's our next location, my next location that I'm super excited about and I miss dearly, good old state of Texas. So your next trip as we go through the wonderful idea of student engagement is going to take us to the great state of Texas. Yes, everything is bigger in Texas. That's why I go with straight hair because it is even hotter and more humid, but I love it. I know I have a lot of Texas friends who are watching right now. But number three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about small group instruction. As we're doing this, think about how when you're in your classroom, how when you work with these students in a small group instruction, how meaningful it is, how engaged those kids are. 
take that time to also think about how you can implement small group instruction even in a virtual world. It's so super important to really think about not delivering what I'm doing to you. This is a webinar versus a workshop. But really think about how when you're working with your students, take that time to break apart your lesson where you meet whole group and then you go into that small group instruction. That's the best way to really think about it. This is what I showcased last week. Last week I talked about as you go going and deploying blended learning, you're going to start out with an introduction. You're going to go to a small group and then you're going to go do a small group two, small group three, and then you're going to do a whole group activity at the end, maybe an exit ticket. When you set this up this way, it gives you that opportunity to work with six, eight, 10 kids at a time versus all 24. The student view, when the students go into this environment, they're gonna start out with the introduction, small group, independent practice, digital content. Before they know it, they're getting back on and doing their exit ticket for the day. When you set up this environment, where the students are working in small groups, it really does help to create that, that ground of helping them move forward, differentiated instruction. And it also gives the kids time to work on their content. So small group instruction is really, really key to really engage those students. Plus, have you noticed all these Zoom calls that you have been doing, all these Google Meets that you've been doing, do you just notice people just sitting there staring at themselves and fixing their hair? Well, that's what the kids do. So they're still going to do that. But if you put them in a small group, there's going to only be six kids seeing each other versus 24 kids watching each other goofing off. All right. Hopefully you noticed there is another clue. Hmm. I wonder where I'm going. All right. Here we go. We're going to go to our next destination. Our next destination is a fun one. It's one of them that I didn't get to go to this year. We were planning on going. But unfortunately, due to cur the, the virus, I had to skip out. I know, it's so sad. <laughs> but here we go, I am in Colorado, the great state of Colorado. Love snowboarding, so snowboarding is one of my absolute favorite things to do in the winter when we get the opportunity to go out there. But number four, this is my favorite one. And I, I'm sure if anybody knows me that this is true. Be a cheerleader. It doesn't mean grab your pom-poms and sit there and be like, yay, but do something what I'm doing right now. Really take time to engage with the students. Think about ways that you can draw out your activities. Or maybe what you can do is you can gamify it like what I'm doing. Hmm. Or you could do a spirit day. This little guy is my, my nephew, Denver. Huh, we're in Colorado and my nephew's name is Denver. And he had spirit day where they did like a kind of like a show and tell and he brought his little puppy. I love it. Do cutouts. What do I mean by that? I mean like think about like how you can get out your cricket and you can do like little cutout sticks and you can have it fun like little ways for you to engage your audience through some type of a hands-on activity to show them. Think about movement. <laughs> When I was working with a school this week, which I'm super excited about, they were talking about their schedule and I stopped them and I said, what, you're expecting these kids to be sitting from eight to two with one hour lunch break. Can we get some movement? So one way to do it would be like, stop your, your lesson, do a game where you can get them up, getting them dancing, like go noodle for the younger kids or the older kids, stop and do some yoga poses. Hey, let's do a tree pose. Really think about getting those kids up and moving even during your lesson because we're gonna be sitting on our bums looking at a screen instead of walking to class, walking to the building, walking to the locker. So really get those kids up and moving just to help re-energize the brain waves. Think about your backgrounds. If you're a social studies teacher, how cool would it be if you're at Gettysburg? Or if you're teaching language arts and you're doing something with a book about kite runner, you could do it where you're going to be going out flying kites. Think about your backgrounds. Think about ways you can do that. Do a reveal. Last week, I did a whole entire post-it note idea where I had the items laid out and I pulled off the post-it notes. And then you're like, ooh, I wonder what's coming next. And then also, just do that show and tell, just like my little nephew. How cool is it to really think about bringing them in show and tell with their pets, bringing in ideas of what they like to do. 
you need to create that culture between you and the students, but also the students in your classroom for next year. They might not get to start out in the same classroom, so really think about ways that you can bring them back. All right, so there are some of my fun ways to be a cheerleader. Not necessarily a cheerleader, cheerleader, but a fun way to be a cheerleader. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Quick question check just to see how we're doing before I go to our next state. Anybody have any questions for me? Or Jeff? Got this in my way here, hold on. All right, ooh, Kansas City. Oh, we're getting close, nope, nope. Um, Huntsville, H Hutchinson Island, Florida. I, I would love to go there, but no, that's not. Oh, Samantha, that's a really good idea. You could do a TikTok video together. Maybe you get them practicing and the next time they come, you can record it. Samantha, that's a really great idea. I hope you guys are reading the post other than where I'm headed, but I hope you're reading the post because it's gonna give you some ideas. That chat box or the Q&A, that's for you guys so you guys can communicate back and forth. So remember, we all have a voice. It's just webinars. There's going to be like, we're talking like over 100 people. So it makes it difficult for all 100 of us to have a voice. All right. We were told not to have kids unsupervised small groups when they're, uh, since they will be with one at a time. Ooh, Maria, let me look at, into that. I'm trying to see what you're trying to say. But there is no supervision, supervised instance. I can only be with one at a time. Um, you're going to be with groups of like, say, five or eight kids. And small group means that they're going to be able to do like their independent practice. Why don't you email me and you and I can have a conversation about what that looks like. And then we can figure out ways to kind of work around that. All right. Here we go, my next wonderful state. So we're leaving the great state of Colorado and I'm going to one of my favorite locations, Santa Monica Pier. I love Santa Monica because I have schools out there for the last five years I've been working with California, Santa Monica Malibu School District. And I love it because after I'm done working, guess what I get to do? I get to go hit the beach and I get to go out surfing. So it's kind of cool to be able to do my passion while working. So we have just made it. Oops, sorry. We don't want to go through that again. We have just made it to the great state of California. Yay! California. We love it out there. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to set expectations. My nephew, you see his photo here, right? And his photo of him is him working. He would do his work, he would get online, and he would do what he was supposed to do, but he found out he was losing points because the teacher said, well, you have to show your face. If we don't show your face, you're gonna lose five points. And he like looked at me, he goes, Aunt Russia, I didn't know that. So you need to really think about this. Set your expectations. What is your point value? Are you, how much are your exit tickets worth? How much is your classwork worth? How much is your participation? How much is your, your projects? Really break that down for the students because they need to know. We can't just spring it on and be like, oh, you lost five points. Well, then that's gonna get them frustrated and they're not gonna to want to participate. Really lay that out for them, just like you would in a classroom. Uh, this is that poster that I was talking about. Growing together, virtual expectations, show up on time. Raise your virtual hand. If you have a question, raise your virtual hand versus shouting out. You know, we always want kids to answer yes or no. And in the virtual Zoom world, you can have them go thumbs up or thumbs down. There's even expressions. You could put a, if you're using Pear Deck or Nearpod, you can have them answering questions right there on the screen. But have them, let them have a voice just like in their classroom, but don't let everybody talk over each other. Be kind. If they type in all caps, it seems like they're yelling at people. So talk to them. Make sure you capitalize and make sure you're not typing in all caps because people might be taking it the wrong way. Mute yourself. <laughs> There's always a good reason to mute yourself. The reason is because you might have the dog barking. You might have the UPS truck show up or the dump truck. So having that background noise muted is going to help everybody to learn. What do we mean by share? Share the space, share together, share ideas. We're in this virtual world together. We don't want to just be learning by ourselves. So let them share out their ideas. So using a Padlet is a really good way or Yo Teach app. Yo Teach, Y-O Teach app 
www.ebooksforbusinesswomen.com is a back channel that the students can sit there, ask questions. They can have a discussion behind the scenes as well as in that chat room. But the best thing is it continues even after your virtual website is over. And avoid distractions. <laughs> I've heard some really big horror stories where mom forgot that there was a virtual world going on and walks right past to the bathroom after a shower. Just make sure you set it up in an environment where you can avoid those distractions from toys, from people walking by. Tell the students this, tell them that, because then it's going to help everybody learn. And then also, I kind of created this as like a growing like collaboration. Like, you know, really think about like how you're doing it. Show your face, use the chat room, communicate, really collaborate together. All of these things are going to grow a really healthy virtual environment. Again, that is an act, this whole thing, oh, see, I gotta remember, when I got my screen on, I have to be able to go back and turn it off. <laughs> so this is, again, is the whole entire idea of where I created that little grow together virtual anchor chart or poster that you could send home with your parents. I actually took a lot of these ideas from an online school as well as when I created my virtual school because it really does help for us to really think about how do kids learn in a virtual world every day anyway? What can we learn from them? So I will make sure I post that link in our email back to you after this webinar so you can go take a look at it later. All right, Jeff and Allison, how's it going? We have gone through five things. Is there any big questions that we need to answer? No, I don't think so. Uh, some very, very, very close guesses. A lot of guesses coming in. A lot of great guesses. I don't, I'm going to have to check out some of these. There must be horses on, I think it's Pismo Beach in California. That one's been nominated a couple times. I have to check that out. Um, there was, Laura just was asking, what was the resource that you were just talking about? I think it was Yo Teach, yes. right? Yo Teach app. Uh, YoTeachApp.com, that's that back channel. And that Connections Academy is where I found those resources. Let me go ahead and put that link so you guys can have it now. It's, they call it the ABCs of etiquette. So let me put that up here for you guys. And then I will also put it in. So it's in that chat room now. And I will also put it into your follow-up email because it is important to see what are these virtual teachers doing? They have been teaching like this for years. We can learn from them. So they never get a chance to meet their kids. So learning how do they connect with their kids is also important. I'm super excited. I'm excited to see everybody still guessing. So I'm keeping your attention. Hmm, is this a good way to make sure kids are paying attention? We'll see. <laughs> Marcia, Marcia, we had a great question from Jessica. Um, she asked if the screen time from eight to three with a one hour lunch would be for older kids, younger kids, how would that work um, with the different levels of students? Say that again. Jessica was wondering how blended learning would work uh, with screen time. Would it be, would students be on there from eight to three all day? Or is that just kind of for older kids or how might that look? Yeah, is this Jessica Gates from Texas? No, it's Jessica Corbeil. I think oh. I pronounced that right. Okay, well, Jessica Corbeil, great question. So, Jessica, I think that what's going to happen is it's all up to your school district and how they set it up. Every school district I'm talking to has different ways of rolling it out. One school district is thinking about doing it in three-hour chunks. One school district is thinking about doing it in five-hour chunks. Some people are doing an A-B day, where it's like you get to work virtually on your own, get the time you're scheduled. So I don't have the answers for the screen time because it's all up to your school district and what they decide. I'm just telling you that you, no matter what is happening, get those kids up and moving because we just don't want them sitting there all day. I don't know about you, but sometimes I tell my husband, I'm like, let's go for a walk. I just got to get away from the computer. I just got to get up. I just need to leave this environment so my brain can think of new ideas. Thanks for asking that question, Allison. All right, let's go to our next spot. We're going to our next destination, and this one is Seattle. Seattle is our sixth stop along the way, and it's talking about how change the way you present. 
If anybody has been following me for the last 10 weeks, you know every time you show up here, I have something different for you. I have been doing magnets with my dry erase board. I've used the hover cam. We have brought in different people, guest speakers. It's just thinking about ways to engage your audience. Yes, we have slideshows and we love slideshows. Slideshows are great and I'm not saying don't use them. Use it in conjunction with Pear Deck. But really think about ways that you're going to truly change up the way you teach. So bring in hands-on activities. I am going to stop this. I want to show you some other ideas of ways to engage students with your presentations and your projects. So here are some examples. Oh, see, this like my background screen is kind of getting annoying. I'm going to be honest. It's kind of fun at the same time, but it's also kind of annoying because I have to go back and forth, back and forth, but at the same time, it's fun. So as we're sitting here, I want to talk about, here we go. This is some ideas. All of these things can be found on our website. So these are like tear off ideas where we're going to go in and like say, let's do creative activities. In the virtual world, maybe you just have it. So when they take it, they cover it up. But these are just tear and go. So if you are even in a classroom, you can have a tear it off. They can do the creative activities that go along with this. Other things that we're thinking about with creativity and the ways to get the kids engaged is when you're presenting content to the students, you don't always have to be the person to deliver it. So what if you were to set up a activity that looks something like this? where it has, I'm talking about differentiation, and I did it in a blended learning environment, and then it's all these things that go down, explore, engage, design, apply, and they can pick four or five squares that keeps talking about differentiation in their own way. This is a great way to engage the kids because they're going to be able to pick which one works for you. Please don't give them all these choices at first, but rather when you're setting this up, do three or four choices and then build your way up to it. I was looking for a choice word to have three, but you know what I'm talking about. We don't want to go overboard with it with our students. So start small. So change the way you present, add your backgrounds, add something fun, add, oh, so see, I even had all these like cool little cutouts ready to go. Like we just went to California. Now we're going to go to, we are in Washington. Woohoo! Now our next state. It's a good one. It's one of my favorites and I know there's a lot of people here from this great wonderful state. It is the state of Iowa. So we're going to go to the state of Iowa. Most people go to Iowa when they have to go to Iowa, but I love going to Iowa because it's actually really beautiful. It has rolling hills. Um, people call it the flyover states, but the next time you're going on a road trip, make sure you go through Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa. There's a lot to see. It does get boring on 80, but at the same time, there's a lot to see there. So we're going to go to our next one that we're going to be talking about, and we're going to go to our number. Whoops, I got to have my cheat sheet here. We're going to go to number seven. Oh, this one's good. This one is setting up, thinking about how you can set up virtual experts. In the classroom, we set it up where we have a virtual classroom experts. So this little girl has a lanyard on. That lanyard is indicating that she's an expert. So if the kids get stuck, they can go over and ask her a question. So they know anybody with a green lanyard is going to help me with the technology. Anybody with a blue lanyard is going to help me with independent practice. These studio experts keep working. Well, in a virtual world, we don't have, can't use lanyards because one, we can't see that. So what if we created some type of a back channel that has questions? This is called Classroom Q. Go ahead, grab your phones. Follow the little code. All you go into is go to classroomq.com. And on your phone, it's going to be, you're going to put in that code. And you can ask me questions. It's going to pop up on my screen. And I'm going to be able to share that with the students. Basically, think of it as you're going to the deli store or the BMV. And it's going to say, hey, Jeff Kish has a question. Hey, Allison has a question. Other students will be able to look at that and answer it before you. Like maybe they're stuck getting logged in. Maybe they need help finding the video. Maybe they need help just trying to find out the clues. So this is definitely something that you would want to do is like think about setting up virtual experts who are going to monitor your classroom queue or you will be able to go in and assign based on how they answer. 
I did upgrade this, but you don't have to. You can put in as many questions as you are. You could just do five people in a queue, but if you upgrade, it's just going to help. When I was sitting there thinking about this tool, I really thought about, well, is it necessary? I have that chat room in my, in my Zoom. Can't they just put that questions there? Or I have my email. Can't they just email me? Well, long story short, I don't want 900 emails with people having the same question over and over again and having to answer back and forth. The chat room is only good when I have Zoom or Google Meet open. So if I have something like this in the background that's just always in the background running or if people have questions, it's just going to be a, a one more thing I have to check, but I don't have to do a billion emails. It's just going to be easy to fix. So if I can see all five kids have the same question, I can email those five kids right away one shot saying, hey, here's the link that you're missing. So take a look at Classroom Q. I think setting up virtual experts is going to be a really good way to do this. And oh, I forgot I had this too. Like if you thought about virtual experts and we had it set up, maybe, maybe they get like a little tag that they could put in the background. Um, so with the, when they log in, maybe they have a virtual background that says, hey, I'm the virtual expert, so make sure you come and ask me questions. I really think kids would like this. I think setting it up where they have the ability to say, I want to become the virtual expert. I'm going to get my work done. Um, hey, Mrs. Kish, let me know if you need help next week. I would love to help kids out with digital content. They're still doing their work. They're just going to be there to help support you. So think about that as well. So that is step number seven. Okay, Jeff, do we have anybody with our winner yet? There are, there have been a couple very, very, very close. Very close? Not quite yet. Okay, we're going to our next stop. We're going to stop number eight. Remember, there's only 10 years. So our next stop is the great state of New York. Oh, I love New York. This is actually outside of Rochester, New York. Mexico, New York is where I was at when I was teaching. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about bingo. <laughs> What I'm really thinking about in this next part is thinking about how, when we set this up, we can really think about gamifying our classroom environment to making it more meaningful for the students. Adding in Bingo Baker. If you were in one of my webinars, you know I did this, where I gave you a sheet of all the keywords that I was going to talk about, and then you marked it off virtually, and you said, hey, bingo. What I like about Bingo Baker is, one, it's free. Two, you can go in and put pictures, or you can put icons, or just words. Then the kids are going to be listening to you, and you're going to be able to mark off those keywords as you go. Another one is sketch noting. When I am doing virtual workshops as well as on-site workshops, I give them a sketch note where they can go in and sketch pad this out. In the virtual world, because kids don't have paper, I just go into Google Slides, make the sketch noting backdrop, and then they can write, draw, and type on top of it. So they're keeping track of all of these clues that I'm giving, which, if you've been paying attention, here are the clues so far. Hmm, lower 48, horses, hmm, surfing, sunrises, uh-oh, this is a good one, North, Not South, and Netflix, hmm. So when you gamify your lesson, you give those opportunities for the kids to kind of pay attention to watch your screen. I hope that you're doing that right now, like, ooh, I hope I win, because you get time with me. How cool is that? All right, we have two more destinations before we hit the last one, one more before we hit the last one. So I'm going to go to number nine. Number nine is one of my very, 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 very favorite things, places as well as uh, things to implement. And the place is Tennessee. I love going to Tennessee for their calm water. Yes, I am a wakeboarder. Therefore, I love going out on the lake and spending time with my husband, dog, friends out boating. So our next destination is Tennessee. And this one is talking about checklist. Designing a checklist. A checklist that is virtual. I'm going to hit play here on the screen so you can actually see what it looks like. So it is a Google Sheet that I have created a checklist in. I know this for a fact. When I gave my nieces and nephews a checklist when they were working virtually, they got more work done because they're able to go over and mark that box off. 
I got it done. Yay. Super excited. This spreadsheet is linked onto this little a piece of paper that I said to grab. And I really like it because it's focusing the kids. Make sure you go to the mini lesson. Make sure you do independent practice. You don't have to have all of these, but it's a good starting point. Okay, so what if you're ready for that next round? What if you want more than just one day? Well, this is it's pretty easy. You just add columns to your spreadsheet. So here is a video of myself going through this. So here's what I do. The first thing is I set it up and I can show you that top bar is frozen. That top bar does not move. So the kids scroll up and down. They see it. So I say learning studio day one, day two complete. So it doesn't matter if they go clear to the bottom. Now I'm going to copy and paste these two columns to the right. So I'm going to go copy. And then I go over, find two new columns, and I'm going to hit paste. Those two columns are going to automatically appear, right? But what I notice is if I keep going and it's a five-day checklist, the kids are going to get stuck. So I'm going to teach you how to freeze the very first left column. So I'm going to highlight the column. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to hit the word freeze, and I'm going to go to column. Now, when the kids scroll right and left, up and down, the top and the side stay frozen so that they can actually see that those headers don't move. It's a simple trick. Also, when you grab this, you'll see that I got rid of all the extra cells because it is a spreadsheet. So I went in and I deleted all the extra cells that go along with it. You guys, it's tips like this that are going to make your virtual world a lot easier. And it's really easy. I'm going to have this mimic what is on my Google Classroom or Schoology. It is a really good way to keep those kids engaged because they know exactly what they need to do. And those check boxes, that's the best thing. They're like, yes, I got it all done. <laughs> Trust me, I know this. All right, here we go. Guess what? We are time to do our last destination. And I'm waiting. Do we have a winner, Jeff? No, we do not have a winner yet. Do we have anybody close? Several people have been close. Okay. The last destination, one of my absolute favorites, is Outer Banks, North Carolina, Carova. Carova. Yes. Yes. So we must have had 30 to 40 people that guessed the Outer Banks. And we have four people that were very close they chose Kerala beach which is just down the road it's the last road it's the last town that has pavement yeah. and we had sheila karen scott and molly that all guessed Kerala with sheila guessing it at 142 which was only uh, 12 minutes into the presentation yep so nice job sheila Give all those people who guess Corolla the make sure you get their emails. We'll get them a free workshop because this is it. This is where we wanted to end up. We were hoping that you guys were paying attention. We were super excited that you're watching us. And you know, look, we catch you going by wanting you to know where their end destination is. But the end destination is the most important. The end destination is talking about how we can deliver this content to our students. And when we deliver the content in meaningful ways, bring it with excitement, that's great. But we also really need to think about truly setting up, no matter what environment, a blended, a true blended learning environment. Blended learning by definition is allowing students to work at their own pace, place, and path. And everything's driven by data. So we can have all this information coming into us, but if we don't use it, we're not going to really improve scores, student engagement, behavior issues. We really got to bring everything together. Blended learning is just good teaching. Let me walk you through that pace. Pace means we're going to set timers in a virtual or a home environment where there are school environment where they are going to set a timer. Hey, I need to independently read for 20 minutes. I need to complete this activity for 10 minutes. Place means where do the kids feel comfortable? So my nephew, Trevor, very comfortable sitting at a table. My nephew, Christian, very comfortable sitting on a couch. My nephew, Denver, very comfortable sitting at the table. I love it. He's in preschool. A lot of people say, but how are preschoolers supposed to do this? It's when the teachers make it engaging that they will be able to listen. I love it. He's even sucking his little thumb. So super cute. But this was his one of his lessons that his school went to and set up. Yeah, you might get him crazy, but if it's engaging enough, they're going to stay. 
So place, allowing the kids that work where it works best for them. Path, setting up those checklists. Here's another example of a checklist. This one I also made in Google Spreadsheet where they can go and mark it off. This would be more for like my higher level students where it's just like, hey, here's what you need to do for mini lesson. Here's what your activities are. Here's your online resources and any notes. Very simple, very direct. But all of that is going to help me to keep moving my students forward. Pace, place, path, driven by data. There's our road trip, our road trip of engagement. When you really think about setting up your classroom, you really wanna think about creative ways to put this all together. I'm just really bummed. I spent hours <laughs> putting together all these really cool fun sticks for you guys, but that's okay. It doesn't work with a virtual background, lesson learned. So I, at the same time though, we want you to know that we're here to continue helping you and we do have some sad, sad news. Are you guys ready for this? All right, I'm gonna change out my background so that way you don't have to hear it and see it anymore. The sad news is this is our last webinar. Starting next week, we are going to be doing online workshops for schools and we are booked for the next couple of weeks and we will not be able to do it on our Thursdays. And then we go into Kish Camp, which is one of our absolute favorite things. Could you imagine having me as an aunt? Well, Kish Camp is where we bring all of our nieces and nephews in and we do a complete Kish Camp explosion where they do all kinds of fun things. So that means that this is our last virtual workshop or virtual webinar for a while until we get back into the swing of things. Maybe in August, maybe in September, not for sure. But it doesn't mean you, can, you have to leave us. We are here to help you. We wanna make sure that we can get your school up on board. We, we're taking on more and more schools. So please, please remember we have workshops, we have webinars, we have the app. We make stuff all the time. So make sure you're following me on Twitter, Allison on Twitter, Jeff on Twitter, because that is going to just help you keep you connected. All right, um, I know Allison does have a lesson. We're gonna see if we could get that in before we leave. We have a lot of people still hanging out with us, so hopefully I kept you engaged <laughs> in the student engagement activity. Um, Allison, do you wanna kind of share out your lesson and what you created for a hybrid classroom? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna to try to share my screen and walk you through a lesson that um, all the teacher, all the science teachers at our school did, and it worked really well. And I made it so, like Marcia said, it could be hybrid, virtual, or in class. Um, it looks like I can't share my screen. Okay, so, perfect. I'll get it up here for you. I got it for you, sweetheart. Let me get it set up for you. Um, you know, hey, this happens, right? No big deal. But Allison, walk them through what you were setting up while I pull it up here for a second. Okay, so the uh, hardest part is getting started with this. I use a planning sheet where I just jot down um, everything I'd want to include in the virtual um, or in class studios that I would have. It's always important to create things that can be done in class and sent home with students because all students are working at their own pace. So I don't want to have anything that has to be done fully in class. We also know attendance can be an issue sometimes. So I want to be able to let students know what they can take home with them if they're not gonna be there the next day. Um, so it looks like the second page, yep. So this is my planning overview. I just went through and talked about, or I wrote down the learning objectives, what I wanted students to accomplish. Um, then I started thinking about how am I gonna kick this off? I don't wanna go over everything with the students. I want them to try to do some things on their own, but I wanna make sure I give the, them enough information to get started. So for five to 10 minutes, I'm just gonna kick off explaining key terms, doing some practice with them. This lesson is all about observations and inferences. Uh, so it's something I would start off the year with every year. So this is a great lesson to do at the beginning. Then I wanna talk, think about small group instructions. What students am I going to have in what groups? Which ones will need the most reteaching? Those are the ones I wanna see first. Then what students I know can get started, but will probably have some questions or need to do a little bit more practice. I'll see those second. And then the students that I know want to go off and do their own thing, they picked it up right away. Those are the students I'll probably see last so I can answer any questions they might have or dive deeper into the uh, content. Digital content, any resources I'm going to use, I list on my planning sheet and then um, anything I'm going to have to print out for the kids. So that's kind of my planning overview. Uh, this is the hardest part. 
And I want to tell you, Allison is a very great organizer. When I was in her classroom and I was coaching her to be, for blended learning, I mean, like super organized. Yes, it takes time, but man, when you walk in and you're organized in this fashion, it helps, right, Allison? It does. If you are stressed out and running around trying to make copies and lay things out when the kids are coming in, they're going to feel it and they're not going to respond as well. So I like to take extra time to make sure everything is as it should be before the students come in. And that way, because this will be new to them, they aren't overwhelmed. We're going through it together and I can calm them down a little bit. So even, that's my... Yeah, that's even it. in the virtual world, you still have to be organized. You still need to be ready to go, which is what you created here. So walk them through their schedule. So this is the schedule I would follow. Um, this one's for a 60 minute block time. Uh, this is just what it would look like for the groups. So 10 minutes we would kick off, whether it's virtual or in class, I would spend the first 10 minutes of my time with the students uh, doing an online lesson or together where again, we talk about key terms, do some practice and get them to where the students feel like they could maybe go off and start some things on their own. Um, then the next 30 minutes, for, for 30 minutes, I'm going to spend time working with the different groups. I'm going to call my first group up. Again, this is where I'm going to go through some basic practice with them, make sure that they understand what the concept was that we're working on. The second group I call up, um, I already know that they can do some of it on their own, so we're just going to dive straight in without reteaching. I'm just going to do practice with them because I know that's probably what they need. And then the last group, this is where we're going to talk about how, now that you know how to do this, how can we apply it to real life? When would you actually use this? So you can see I already differentiated with the mini lessons. Um, digital content, I have, if I was going to be with the students, um, I have an article I'd probably print out. It, it, Newzella is great though, because you can assign it to Google Classroom. So I would also use it if in virtual learning too. It's great, it goes straight into Google Classroom. You can attach questions to it. Um, so I love using that. I would also have a video the students might be able to watch. Um, Edpuzzle is great. You can ask questions embedded in the YouTube video. I've used that a lot and it kind of keeps the kids on track because they know they have to watch it to answer the questions. They can't just put it on mute and then turn on something else to listen to. Um, so I teach high school, so I've always got to be one step ahead of them. Uh, practice. So the next independent practice uh, section, the 10 minutes for the students, this is where I like to give them something where I can truly see if they know what they're doing. Um, sometimes this can be a worksheet. I try to steer clear of worksheets as much as possible, but it is a great way where you can give them uh, feedback on it. So I have an online skills practice sheet, um, but I've also thought of one that we could do in class, which is like a grab bag where making observations, they would have to put their hand into a bag and uh, figure out what's in there based on their observations. Creepy. <laughs> It is. Yeah, they don't want to do it, but they love it. So that's something, it's not a worksheet. They would have a lab sheet to fill out along with, with it, but I would truly be able to see if they knew the types of observations they were making and how they make inferences based on that. That's and then awesome. lastly, we would wrap it up with assessments. I would do a choice board um, where they can choose how they want to show me that they mastered the concept, or if you want to stick with just an assessment, then you could do that as well. And then we'd wrap it up and make sure we all understand what we're doing. I love it. And then that's a really good way. And then you have all the activities here that go along with it, that go along with the lesson. And you're really thinking about it as like a 90 minute block time. And then you use the checklist that we showcased about two weeks ago, where the students can go over and just click and drag the check marks right on top of a spreadsheet, right? I guess this is a good Google slide, right? Or yes, I think yeah, it's, a it's, a Google, it's a Google slide, but um, the students can always print off the slide if, unless if they don't want to do this virtually, they can print it off at home and use it. But I think it's important that you have your own checklist. So you're on, you don't get confused of what you're doing in that time because it is fast paced, but it's also important that the students are checking off and knowing what they've done and what they still have to do. Because what we really want is students to take responsibility for their learning and become a uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, in charge of their own learning, where they're keeping track of things and it's not you holding their hand. It and won't happen it. right away. <laughs> and I love this. It's almost like this is a 90 minute block period or two days. So if you started this and the kids were in an A, B day, I mean, A day they're with you, B day they're virtual, they start with you in class and then B day they could be working on anything they did get finished and they have this checklist to keep them on track. Exactly. I always let my students know 
at the beginning what tasks can be done at home. So if you were seeing them on a hybrid schedule, it would be important for you to take care of the things that can be done in class and let them know what you expect them to do outside of the class um, with their checklist. I think this is a great example of what you can do in a 90 minute block and still in blended learning, no matter what kind of environment we have. I think a lot of schools are really thinking about the A, B or 90 minutes. And this is a great example. And I know this is high school, but this can drop down to kindergarten or first grade. We just have to start to simplify it and really break it down for the students. If you watch that video last week where we talked about that, we really just said start slow to build this up. Allison has been a blended learning teacher for now, what, three years, Allison? Four years? Yeah, I think I, I think we'll say three years. The, okay. the first year I know I was really feeling my way through it, but for three years I've been using this and my students love it. And it was so easy to transition to this type of learning when we went virtual because the students already knew that they were, they had to do some things on their own. So it was really helpful. And I think it would work great with all virtual hybrid or in class situations. That's great. And Allison, if people ask for you to share this, are you okay with sharing this out with them? Absolutely, please use it. <laughs> okay, we'll make sure we put the link to this on the uh, follow-up email so that way you guys can go ahead and take a look at it. And it's a great template. It's a great template just to really wrap your head around it. I think Allison made the best point is it's, it takes a lot of time to plan it out, but then once you have that first planning page, it will fall into place. And the more organized you are, the kids will sense it. You know, like I said, I, I work really hard to make sure every week we come in with new ideas and get you guys excited about teaching virtual or online or on site. So I hope you're taking some of these ideas with you. Don't forget, find us online, find our YouTube channel, find us because we are here to help. If your school is looking for any workshops, we're here. That's what we do. So thanks guys. It has been an amazing 10 week journey. I can't believe it's coming to an end. I'm a little sad, but we will be back. Just keep following us, okay? All right, enjoy, good luck, and let us know how we can help you. Bye, everybody.